Bhopal, a city once bustling with life, was forever altered by a disaster that claimed thousands of lives and caused immeasurable sufferings. Today we remember Bhopal gas tragedy and its enduring impact. I am Jaspal Singh, an ex-IS officer, scientist at BIS and I possess PhD degree in environmental engineering. In this video we will be talking about Bhopal's poisonous past and why it took 40 years for the disposal of the waste generated aftermath of this incidence. Bhopal gas tragedy, it's all started with Bhopal. The capital of Madhya Pradesh, India, has a history intertwined with both natural beauty and industrial development. If we talk about the industrial growth in pre-independence era, Bhopal's industrial development was relatively limited. It was primarily an agrarian economy with only small scale industries. Now post-independence focused the Indian government to pursue a policy of industrialization and Bhopal was identified as a location of industrial development due to its central location and available land. The key industries which bloomed in that era was heavy industry, chemical and pesticide industry, engineering and metal working industry, food processing and textile industry. If we talk about the factors contributing to this industrial development, it ranges from government policies to infrastructure to availability of land and resources and ample employment opportunities. If we talk about the Union Carbide plant, which was the cornerstone in this entire episode, the primary purpose of this Union Carbide plant in Bhopal was to produce the seven a widely used insecticide or pesticide. The Indian government at that time was focused on increasing the agricultural output and pesticides like seven was a crucial tool for protecting the crops and improving the yield. Initially, the plant formulated the pesticides using the imported ingredients, but later it began producing methyl isocyanide, that is MIC, a key intermediate chemical in the production of seven. This shift to local MIC production was intended to make the process more efficient and cost effective. Now if we talk about the tragedy which happened on 2nd and 3rd December 1984. The precursor of the tragedy were safety laps. In the month leading up to the disaster, there were reports of safety violations and cost-cutting measures at Union Carbide plant. Several safety systems were either malfunctioned or were not operational. And a large quantity of the methyl isocyanide was stored in the plant itself. If we talk about the incident, it started with the entry of the water. Entry of the water in MIC tank. So on 2nd December, at night, it was believed that water entered into one of the MIC storage tank. The exact cause of this entry of the water is still debatable, with theories ranging from a faulty wall to deliberate sabotage. Now as the water entered into this MIC storage tank, it triggered a rapid exothermic reaction. It is a reaction in which heat is evolved, so it is a very vigorous chemical reaction. This caused a dramatic increase in the temperature and pressure within the tank. The safety system designed to handle such emergencies including the refrigeration system and gas scrubbers were either not functioning or were inadequate. The pressure relief valve which was placed on the tank eventually bursted, releasing a massive cloud of toxic MIC gas into the surrounding air. If we see this entire flow chart, all the safety measures were not working. If any one of the safety measures would have been working that night, this incident would have not happened. It started with the slip bind. It was not installed. It could have prevented the entry of the water into the MIC tank. Pressure gauge readings were ignored. There were faulty pressure gauge readings which were being indicated on the gauge, but it was being ignored. 
temperature measurements were not available because of the exothermic reaction which happened the temperature shot up but the measurement of the temperature was not available pressurized tank didn't have a valve to depressurize the build up of the gases cooling system was switched off at the time of the incident vent gas scrubber which could have prevented the harmful effect of the toxic gases released after the incident into the atmosphere was under maintenance the flare system which could have alerted the nearby residents was also under maintenance and the water curtain that could have reduced the impact of the toxic gases released was also not tall enough so it could be seen all the safety measures were either inadequate or were not working properly on the day of the incident and this was the impact the mic tank in which the storage was being carried out was busted the horror unfolds the next day also around the midnight the resident living nearby the plant begin to experience the effect of the gas leak the woke up with the burning eyes severe coughing and difficulty breathing as the gas spread the panic also spread people fled their homes in a desperate attempt to escape the choking fumes there was a widespread confusion and a lack of any effective evacuation plan if we talk about the immediate impact the gas caused immediate and severe health impact thousand died immediately because of the respiratory failure pulmonary edema and other complications and many other suffered with the injuries including blindness lung damage and neurological disorders if we talk about the aftermath of the incidents the morning of the december 3rd revealed the full extent of the tragedy the streets were littered with the bodies and hospitals were overwhelmed with the victims long term consequences were also being observed this disaster had devastating long term consequences with the survivors suffering from chronic health problem psychological trauma and economic hardship the environmental contamination also had a lasting impact on the region from the pictures you can gauge the impact of the tragedy on the resident and the entire area now after decades of the controversy almost four decades and the delays the government has finally begun the disposing of the toxic waste remaining at the union carbide plant in bhopal and here's how it is being done the incineration of this waste is done at pitampur the waste is being transported to the pitampur an industrial area about 230 kilometers from the bhopal in the state of the madhya pradesh nearby to indore it is being incinerated in a facility operated by pitampur waste management private limited in collaboration with re sustainability limited formerly known as remki enviro engineers the incineration process involves the burning of the waste at a very high temperature of around 1200 degrees celsius to break down the toxic chemicals once the burning is completed the ash will be examined for the harmful elements once it is confirmed the ash is free of toxic elements it will be buried in the landfill with a two layer to prevent contact with the soil and water in order to carry out the disposal 12 leak free containers carrying 337 metric tons of the toxic waste from the incineration reached the pitampura plant 230 kilometers from the bhopal on thursday that is 2nd of jan 2025 a trial run for the disposal of 10 metric ton of the waste was already being conducted in 2015 and the disposal of the remaining 337 metric ton of the toxic waste will be carried out in next 3 to 9 months depending 
upon the capacity of the plant. Now, if we talk about the road map, the Central Pollution Control Board has outlined a detailed process for the incineration of 337 metric ton of the waste, starting with the initial 90 kilogram feed. This will test the furnace capacity to handle the toxic material at a temperature of up to 1200 degrees Celsius. If it is successful, the remaining waste will be processed gradually. The hazardous waste is not in liquid form, but rather solid and largely covered in sand and soil with no plastic present. According to high ranking officials involved in the process, the waste was packed in large PVC bags and was kept in the same factory in Bhopal without reported injuries or illnesses. These are the visuals of the trucks which are carrying the waste to Pitampur. Now the point is why it took 40 years, 4 decades to carry out the disposal of the waste lying in the Union Carbide factory. And there are several reasons for it, both technical and social and political. The first and the foremost reason is complexity of the waste composition. The waste consisted of various toxic chemicals including MIC and its byproduct whose long term environmental and health impacts are not fully understandable. This made safe disposal challenging and the hazardous nature of the waste also delayed the disposal of the waste. The second reason is the lack of suitable disposal technology. Now limited technology was available in India in 1980s and 1990s at the time the disaster took place. So the technology for handling and disposing of such high toxic industrial waste was not available in our country. Over the years, the research and development was needed to design and implement a safe procedure to neutralize the impact of this toxic waste. The third factor was environmental and safety concern. So environmental and safety concern. The risk of secondary contamination was always there. Disposal method had to ensure that there would be no release of toxic substance into the air, soil or water during the disposal process, which required stringent safety measures and environmental assessment. Disposal sites need to be monitored for the extended period to ensure that there were no leaks or long term contamination complicating the process further. The next factor was infrastructure and facilities. India lagged adequate hazardous waste facilities capable of handling Bhopal gas tragedy waste and the safety standards were very lethargic. So it needed the establishment of new facilities or upgrading of the existing facilities to handle such waste. The next factor which led to the delayed disposal was scientific and technical studies. Extensive scientific studies were required to determine the safest methods for waste treatment or disposal and to assess the environmental impact of different disposal options. The need for multiple studies including the toxological assessment, environmental impact analysis and feasibility studies added to the time required before the disposal of the solid waste. The next reason was regulatory and compliance challenge. Over the decades, environmental laws and regulations evolved, which affected the disposal of the solid waste and implementation of the waste disposal process. Compliance with these laws required additional time. So obtaining necessary approvals from various regulatory bodies including environmental departments, local governments was time consuming and often delayed by bureaucratic processes. And the last reason which led to the delay in disposal of the solid waste was technical expertise and workforce. There was a shortage of technical experts and workforce 
with experience in handling and disposing such hazardous waste safely building the capacity of local teams to manage and dispose required time training and development of the man force for such work further contributed to the delays so if all the factors are being accounted it took 40 years for the disposal of the solid waste now we people as a resident of this country hopes whatever method is being decided for the disposal of the solid waste do not impact the nearby residents environment and society at large however several measures should be enforced that such incidents does not occur in past i hope this video enlightens you about the technical aspects of the tragedy and why the disposal took such a huge time thank you everyone